The lyre is perhaps the best known musical instrument of ancient Greece. The harp-like instrument featured prominently in Greek myth. Of course, myth is not history, but it does mirror the thoughts and lives of the people, and Greek mythology is in particular richly imaginative and incredibly diverse. That imagination and that diversity are clearly demonstrated by the lyre in Greek myth. The lyre is essentially made of a tortoise shell, two fixed arms, and a crossbar, with strings of guts stretching across. For pitch, the strings are of varying thickness and are attached to tuning pegs. The lyre is played by strumming or plucking, either by hand or with a plectrum. In Greek life, the lyre played an important role. Dating back at least as far as the 3rd millennium BCE, it was a common solo instrument and it also often accompanied singers and poets. Lyres could be heard at palaces, banquets, religious ceremonies, and funerals. Lyre competitions were held at festivals, including the great Panathenea. Learning to play the lyre was an essential part of the Greek education, as believed by the renowned philosopher Plato himself. However, the lyre truly comes to life in Greek myth. Its tune inspires passion, jealousy, and hubris. In myth, the lyre's invention is attributed to future messenger god Hermes, who, the day he was born, scooped a tortoise out of its shell, created the first lyre, and proceeded to steal 50 cows from Apollo's sacred herd before cooking too. And yet, when Apollo, god of sun, prophecy, healing, and music, tracked down the infant thief, he was so impressed by the music of the lyre that he forgave all and begged Hermes to give him the instrument. And so the lyre from its creation was the instrument of the gods. Stories abound of mortals challenging the gods to music contests and, inevitably, losing and suffering horrible fates. Thamorous, a famed poet and singer, was so confident in his skill that he made a crass bet with the Nine Muses, goddesses of inspiration and art. The bet was to be determined by a contest of voice and lyre. He, of course, lost, and the muses took away his sight and gift of music. Of course, there are happier stories about mortals and music. It is said by some that the Greek city of Thebes was built by two sons of Zeus. Zethus carried enormous piles of rocks, but his contribution was dwarfed by his brothers. For when Amphion played his lyre, the rocks danced and followed. As Richard P. Martin writes in his book of myths, so music erected the walls of Thebes, the only city ever built by art. The most famous myth, though, is of Orpheus. Son of a muse, his voice and lyre transfixed nature itself. As Martin writes, trees and even the stones themselves moved at the music of his lyre Birds in the air and fish in the sea leapt and soared to the rhythms played. When Orpheus' wife Eurydice died, he journeyed into the underworld with his lyre, and his lament caused even Hades, lord of the dead, to shed iron tears and give him back his wife. Though she never did return, as Orpheus broke his promise not to look back at her until he had led her out of the underworld, causing her to vanish back into the land of the dead. Filled again with grief, Orpheus built a new world for himself out of music. Quite literally, as the music from his lyre caused field and scrub to bloom into a woodland refuge, secluded from humanity. And in the end, Orpheus died as one with his music. Attacked by the frenzied followers of Dionysus, Orpheus continued to sing, pausing stones and branches in midair. When that wasn't enough, his lyre was a shield from his attacker's blows. Eventually, Orpheus was torn limb from limb and thrown in the river. But that is not the end of the story. His head and lyre washed ashore at Lesbos and were buried near the temple of Apollo. It is said that Zeus plucked up his lyre and put it in the sky, making the constellation Lyra. From his grave, though, people said that the music of voice and lyre could still be heard, emanating from within. Orpheus's music 
and the musical legacy of Greek myth lives on.